What's going on everyone? It has been a lone vault wanderer, still sick as a dog, but I've got some exclusive footage that I'm going to show you now on Dishonored 2. So just yesterday I was at an exclusive secret Bethesda event here in Australia and I was able to play a mission in Dishonored 2 as both Corvo and Emily for about two to three hours. So I've got the best bits of the gameplay and I'm going to show you that on screen right now, both of Corvo and Emily, although the focus is going to be on Emily because Corvo's powers are very similar to the first game and she's essentially the new character so I really wanted to focus on her a little bit more but yes I've got plenty of more footage and I made sure to go all through the menus and search every possible area in the mission as possible so if you do have any further questions about the exclusive gameplay that I had access to ask me in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer as many of your questions as possible and also like and share this around I would really appreciate it it's exciting to be able to play a game early and thank you to Bethesda for allowing me to do so but now let's get into the actual gameplay so in this particular session I was playing on a PC using an Xbox One controller and I was playing a mission called Clockwork Mansion and it's about three to four hours into the game itself so there might be some minor spoilers so if you don't want to be spoiled at all feel free to back away now but to be honest it's not that bad and you can probably stand to go through this video with me without really being spoiled at all so take the risk if you want but let's continue so as I said I played as both Corvo and Emily and we didn't have access to all of their powers at this stage we with Corvo, I was able to use Blink, Bend Time, and Wind Blast. So again, similar powers to the first game. And for Emily, I was able to use Domino, Far Reach, and Shadow Walk. And those powers were so awesome, but I'll get into that. Also note as well that the difficulty in the particular mission that I did is not really representative of the final game. And we were given a little bit more power to use in the demo, just so we could experiment, at least with the powers that we were given. In this mission, we had to do two things. First of all, we had to save Anton Sokolov, who returns from the previous game because he's actually been kidnapped so it's not really spoilery to be honest I mean he's just been kidnapped and he returns from the previous game and in terms of the main boss for the level we have to either kill or otherwise deal with Kieran Jindosh now you've actually seen Kieran already in the very first E3 trailer I believe and I think it's Emily is actually approaching Kieran in his particular mansion so that's exactly what this mission was about also note as well that this is a pre-release beta build so there were still some glitches the frame rate I believe was locked at 30 I I could be wrong about that but judging by my experiences on my own pc playing the original dishonored at 1080p 60 fps i believe the version of dishonored 2 that i played in this session was 1080p and locked at 30 fps but again it's pre-release beta build so don't read too much into it and especially some of the glitches you might see in this gameplay so with all that out of the way let's actually talk about some of the gameplay my experiences with it again i'm showing you the best bits i tried to capture as much of the environment and also in particular as much of the combat and the kills as possible and predominantly you're seeing it from the focus of Emily but what I've done is spliced in footage of Corvo as well just to show you how you'd approach this particular mission from Corvo's perspective because he does have different powers and different abilities but predominantly the core gameplay is the same and nothing really differed from a story perspective at least with regards to this mission. So you first start this mission in a particular carriage and you're being taken like on a roller coaster or a train track towards the drop-off point and the first thing that I want to say is that the setting is just really cool and interesting. First of all, the way you actually enter it, I find to be pretty fascinating. The buildings have a distinctive art style. And when you get to the top of the carriage, you just have this awesome, beautiful view with the sunset. I think it just looks absolutely gorgeous. And that's one of the things I really want to emphasize about this particular build and this particular gameplay that I had access to. It looks really, really beautiful. It still has that very, very Dishonored 1 feel, which is good. It's not straying away too much from the original game that we all know and love but the colors the shading the lighting everything seems to be improved with the new void engine that dishonored 2 is running on and sometimes when you're going through these areas you just want to sit back relax and enjoy the view it can honestly get that good at times and i really did personally enjoy it the next thing i'll mention is the jindosh mansion that you're actually making your way towards and where most of the mission takes place is such an interesting level design it's honestly really really enjoyable throughout the mission you'll pull these different configuration levers that'll completely change the look of the level and that's necessary to be able to progress in different ways 
So for example, you saw at the start, there was no way to get up those stairs without actually making them appear by pulling the lever in the first place. And this feature comes up again and again, whether it's spawning different enemies or whether it's bringing out different weapons from the ground that you have to avoid or simply searching different areas of the mansion, particularly in terms of a looting and an exploration perspective. The only way that you're going to be able to see all the innards of this particular mansion is by pulling these levers and gaining access to different areas. One of the cool aspects as well is that when you actually encounter Jindosh through the window or through the glass, he walks towards you after pulling a lever and the path falls in front of him really cool like. I don't know how else to describe it. It's kind of like this cascading pattern of the path falling in front of his feet. I just thought it looked really cool. To be honest, I don't want to talk much about what Jindosh was actually saying because it's fairly story related. Even though there aren't that many spoilers, I feel like that's something people should enjoy for themselves. But at the very least, you can see what he looks like and see the gameplay. The next thing to point out are the Clockwork Soldiers, which are certainly the main and more powerful enemy in this mission in Dishonored 2. And you can take them down many different ways. You can simply shoot them with a pistol or use the explosive bullet pistols. You can shove your sword in them and it shows a quick time animation of you like slicing them and making them explode and seeing electricity go everywhere. You can throw a grenade. You can use the wind blast if you're Corvo. A cool way to kill them is if you're Emily and you're using the shadow walk technique and sneaking up behind them and then using the unique ability to kill them. It just looks absolutely awesome. And I found that that was my favorite way to kill enemies because you can be very sneaky and the end result looks so cool. But in terms of the weapons that I had access to, they were very similar to the original Dishonored. So you had a crossbow, you had sleeping darts, you have the heart which is able to detect runes and I was definitely detecting one as I was playing it. But unfortunately, either I didn't find it or the area wasn't accessible in this particular build. But then you got the pistol, the exploding pistol, grenade, stun mine and the spring razor. So these are all very familiar weapons coming back from the original game. So it's really in terms of the powers that Dishonored 2 makes its difference, especially with Emily. Now, of course, I don't believe we had access to all of the weapons, but we definitely had a few that we could experiment with and kill enemies in different ways. Definitely one of my favorites with Emily is using the domino ability to link two humans together, and then whatever you do to one of them will happen to the other. So I use that in combination with my Shadow Walk to kill one enemy, and that ended up killing another enemy. You can also link them together and shoot one with a dart in the head, and everyone else that's linked by the domino will also die in a similar way. I think it's a unique concept. I love it. And it's really clever, for example, where if you have a sleep dart and you want to get past like four or five enemies, if you link them together and use the sleep dart on one of them, they'll all go to sleep. So I think that's really awesome. I do need to say as well that the kill animations in Dishonored 2 are so gory and they're more gory than what I remember Dishonored 1 being. I think there are more options in that regard. I mean, I was cutting people's heads off, cutting them in half, and there are different animations depending upon what you're actually doing. So sometimes when you run and slide and you cut someone with your sword, it kills them in a different way than to simply facing them one-on-one -on -one and cutting their head off. So there's definitely different varieties, even with just the sword. And also as well, you can use Emily's far reach to grab an enemy in the distance and then use your sword to stab them as they come closer to you. I think it's really fun. And in terms of Emily's far reach ability, I like how it can both be used first for traversal and getting around the map and getting to high areas, similar to Corvo's blink. But also as well, it can be used as a weapon because you can actually use the far reach against an enemy and throw them up in the air, bring them towards you and stab them. It's really cool to use. And I will say as well, in terms of the different abilities between Corvo and Emily, they each have their own advantages and disadvantages when you're trying to traverse around a map and avoid traps and enemies. So in the mission, there's this one instance of a pylon being in the middle of the room. And if you went anywhere near it, it would electrocute you and kill you. Now with Emily, it's very easy to avoid that pylon because her far reach ability makes her so agile and fast and quick moving and gets you much farther than Corvo's blink ability does because the far reach not only does it propel you to a particular spot, you then also jump from that particular spot you've aimed your far reach and go a little bit further too. Whereas with Corvo, when you use blink, you go to that spot. So it might be harder for you to avoid traps in that sense with Corvo. But of course as well, you don't need to kill everyone and you can take a much more low chaos and passive route by using Corvo's and Emily's abilities in different ways. So for example, with Emily, you can use Shadow Walk to both kill someone and also make them unconscious and put them to sleep. So yes, while in one of the trailers for Corvo, it very much seems he's taking a high chaos route. From what I saw, you can take both routes. You can kill every enemy. You can save most enemies. You don't have to take one route or the other. So again, very similar to the first Dishonored game. And at this stage, I think I need to bring up the configuration levers again, because there is this one aspect where you're trying to save Sokolov and he's locked in a room on a bed and you have to press down on different panels, which change the walls and change the configuration of the area that you're in. And you're only able to gain 
gain access to Sokolov once you solve that puzzle. It wasn't too hard and there are ways around it, but I thought that that was really cool. It's not just I'll walk and save Sokolov and it's not like he's in a locked room and I just need a key. You simply have to have the right war configuration in order to be able to find him and I thought that that was interesting. And now at this stage I want to highlight more so some of the differences between playing as Corvo and playing as Emily. In my opinion I preferred playing as Emily and I know I've shown my biases in the past with regards to Emily and wanting to play as her first but I found her powers to be much more unique and much more fun to use. Again we only had access to three of their powers each but linking bodies together with Domino, using the Shadow Walk and also using the Far Reach to both traverse and also kill enemies. I found that there's much more variety when you're playing as Emily and using her powers whereas with Corvo, Blink is a little bit more limited to what Emily's Far Reach is. Bend Time I see as being very important and useful but in this mission, Bend Time wasn't necessarily useful. You can only really use it to try and kill enemies but it still wasn't necessary. I assume that Bending Time will have more of a use in some sort of mission later in the game. And Wind Blast is just a Wind Blast. It helps you push back an enemy and kill them so I definitely did prefer playing as Emily. I prefer her powers but if you liked playing as Corvo in the original game, he plays exactly how he did then and he's still just as fun to use. I also again have to point out the particular decor and the artistic style implemented in Jindosh's mansion. I really like the look of it. It looks really cool, unique. It's inspired by Clockwork and hence the name Clockwork Mansion and I think others are going to enjoy this setting as well and hopefully this kind of ingenuity and artistic style is implemented in other areas of the game because I really did enjoy Clockwork Mansion. It's like you're in the inside of a watch. It was really, really cool. And then when it comes down to the final part of where you're actually confronting Jindosh, like in the original Dishonored, you can either kill him or deal with him in a different way by powering an electroshock machine in his laboratory and use it to degrade his memory and cognitive function. So killing isn't always the answer, which I like, but in this mission at least, if you want to take that other route and not kill Jindosh, there's a little extra you have to do to power the electroshock machine, but if you want to do a low chaos playthrough, that's the price you pay. And then when you've dealt with Jindosh and you've completed the Clockwork Mansion, you then reconvene with Sokolov and you go to the Aventa District. No idea what the Aventa District is. It seems like it's going to be that hub location like you had in the original Dishonored, but we'll have to wait and see. So anyways, Waysanders, I hope you enjoyed this exclusive look at Dishonored 2. It was really awesome to play this game and play this mission early, so I need to thank Bethesda for that. Let me know what you thought about the gameplay in the comments below. Again, if you had any questions about the remainder of the mission that I played, also ask me and I'll answer as many questions as possible. Don't forget to like and share, subscribe if you're new, and until next time, this has been the Lone Vault Wanderer. Please take care of yourself, and would you kindly keep fighting the good fight.